Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Tesla's 2023 annual shareholder meeting in Austin, Texas. <laughs> My name is Martin Vieca. I'm Vice President of Investor Relations, and I will be the chair of today's meeting. Uh, first of all, I really wanted to thank everyone who continues to do this trip on an annual basis and shows up every time. It's really quite something that we have a following as dedicated as this, so thank you very much for that. I also wanted to th uh, thank our first-time visitors. Uh, I know that many of you won a lottery to come for the first time to a Tesla shareholder meeting. <laughs> You, you'll probably notice that unlike many other shareholder meetings of other companies, this one tends to be a bit more fun, so uh, <laughs> hope you enjoy that. But the last thing I really wanted to say is that just thank you so much for all your support over the years. We really feel like you're part of our mission, you know, part of our uh, you know, story, and it's something we truly, truly value. So thank you so much for that. Um, there will be two parts of today's meeting. First, the formal part of the meeting, where we will cover items that stockholders have been asked to vote on, um, as well as any other matters that are properly presented. And after the voting, I will introduce Tesla's co-founder and CEO and TechnoKing, Elon Musk, who, <laughs> who, will, who will give a presentation about Tesla's year in review. But at this time, I'd like to thank uh, the members of the Tesla team and the board who are here with us here today. A representative from PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, Tesla's independent auditor, present with us as well. But before we begin, I'd like to, to introduce you to Tesla's chair, Robin Denholm, who would like to say a few words. I'm a little bit shorter, so. Hello, everyone. <laughs> On behalf of the board, I am really honoured to welcome you all here today to the 2023 annual shareholder meeting. It's wonderful for me to see everyone in the room today and also the many investors that have joined us today via the virtual live stream. It's our third straight year of having the annual meeting here in Austin. At the first meeting, the factory was still in the early stages of development with equipment being installed and commissioned. During the 2022 meeting, production had started to ramp as we produced about 1,600 vehicles that week. And now, less than a year later, we have more than tripled the amount, having achieved production of 5,000 cars in a single week. A huge congratulations to the Texas team. And on top of that, we are getting ready to roll out our first Cybertrucks. <laughs> this exponential trajectory of the Gigafactory here in Texas is a reflection of Tesla as a whole. In 2022 was another record-breaking year for us with deliveries growing by 40% year, year over year. And that trend has continued in the first quarter of 2023. We would not be able to achieve this growth without the dedication of our amazing employees. I've been fortunate enough over the years to actually travel to many of our locations, all of the, the gigafactories around the world, and I can tell you that I've witnessed firsthand how our exceptional employees in, the, in our global talent across the world has together achieved our mission or furthered our mission of accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. A huge round of applause, please. This year, here in Texas, we also had our very first Investor Day where we introduced our company leaders from design to engineering to supply chain, manufacturing, energy and charging. And they each spoke about the role of their teams in making our mission come to life. 
And I was thrilled that investors were able to hear directly from this outstanding leadership team that Elon has been able to put together over many, many years. It is on the strength of their leadership and the hard work of our dedicated employees around the world that I believe we are not only weather the macroeconomic environment that we've seen this year, but also continue to be in the strongest position ever to advance Tesla's mission. As a startup, Tesla proved that electric vehicles could be fun with the Roadster. They could even be better than gas-powered vehicles in every single way with the S and X, and could be all of these things as well as affordable with the Model 3 and Model Y, which last quarter became the best-selling vehicle of any kind in Europe and the best-selling non-pickup vehicle in the United States. And today, as, part, as one of the world's largest global companies, we plan to change the paradigm again by forging the path to achieving a global sustainable energy economy as set out at our investor day in our master plan three. As Tesla grows, so do our customers' positive impact on carbon emissions. When I stood here last year, I proudly announced that in 2021, our customers avoided emitting 8.4 million metric tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions, the equivalent of over 20 billion miles driven by internal combustion engine vehicles. Today, I can tell you that in 2022, our customers avoided releasing over 13.4 million metric tonnes of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, the equivalent of over 33 billion miles of driving of internal combustion vehicles. That's, that's an almost 60% increase in total emission savings year over year. Putting more of our products in customers' hands helps grow that number and our goals of making our products greener over time and further decarbonising the electric grid will help multiply that effect. As part of that goal, I am delighted to say that as described in our recent impact report, our global supercharging network was again 100% renewable in 2022. We've been able to achieve all of this while maintaining, sorry, maintaining industry margins, industry leading margins, and generating strong cash flows over the last several years. Going forward, we will continue our focus on capital investment plans to support our future growth with investments in batteries, in vehicle production, including the next generation platform, in the building of our lithium refinery that we recently uh, broke ground on, in, in the energy storage factories, in our sales and service footprint, and in our charging network, among other things. Before I hand it back to Martin, I would also like to thank Hiro Mizuno who, who, for his dedicated service to the Tesla shareholders and the board these past three years. I would also like to express our enthusiasm on behalf of my fellow directors at the prospect of J.B. Straubel, joining our board. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to tell you that his passion for Tesla and green tech will make him an important asset in our mission to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. So again, on behalf of the, our full board, thank you for your tremendous support and welcome to your 2023 shareholder meeting. And with that, I'll hand it back to Martin. Thank you, Robin. I will, call, I will now call the meeting to order. Uh, please refer to the meeting agenda that has been provided to you and posted on the virtual meeting site. The time is now 3.10 p.m. Central Time, and I declare the polls are now open.
We have already received over the last few weeks voting proxies from stockholders, meaning that almost all the votes that will be counted were already submitted before today. However, if you wish to vote your shares or change your prior vote, you may do so through the virtual meeting site. For those who are in person here today, ballots and ballot boxes were available to you at the check-in. Tesla's board of directors has appointed Computer Share Trust Company to, ser to serve as inspector of elections. Um, Computer Share has taken and signed an oath as inspector uh, and has certified that starting on April 6, 2023, the proxy materials or a notice of internet availability of proxy materials were mailed, um, uh, were mailed or provided to all Tesla stockholders of record March 20th, 2023. We have majority of outstanding shares represented at the meeting, so I declare that there's a quorum present at the meeting and we may proceed with the meeting. The items on the agenda are as follows. Number one. The election of class one directors, Elon Musk, Robin Denholm, and J.B. Straubel to serve for a term of three years or until their resp respective successors are duly elected and qualified. Number two, to approve executive compensation on a non-binding advisory basis. Number three, to approve the frequency of future votes on executive compensation on a non-binding advisory basis. Number four, to ratify the appointment of PricewaterhouseCoopers LLP as Tesla's independent public registered accounting firm for the 2023 fiscal year. Number five, to vote on a stockholder proposal included in our proxy statement, which relates to the reporting of key person risk. Number six, to vote on a stockholder proposal, which the stockholders did not seek to have included in our proxy statement. This last board has recommended that our stock, so, stockholders vote for each of the director nominees for the approval by non-binding advisory vote of executive compensation and the ratification of, an, uh, of appointment of PwC as an independent registered public accounting firm for fiscal year 2023. And every three years for non-binding advisory vote for the frequency of future votes on executive compensation. With respect to stockholder proposal included in our proxy statement, which relates to the reporting on the key man risk, Karen Roberts Dotier, on behalf of Sumtris, is here to present this proposal. Ms. Roberts Dotier, can you please identify yourself? I would like to invite you to speak. You will have three minutes. Hello, uh, thank you for having me here today. Under discussion is a shareholder proposal concerning key person risk at Tesla, requiring Tesla's board to draft a report covering the steps taken to ameliorate the potential impacts of loss of key persons in the company. Um, however, before I begin, I would first like to say thank you to Mr. Musk. For so many of us, you stepped into fields where we had so desperately wanted to see change, and through bringing in a talented team, willing to put in long hours, you dragged reluctant industries kicking and screaming into a better future. And for that, um, thank you. Building up this uh, juggernaut around us, which as you largely put it, uh, runs itself these days. Um, well, thank you for that. And yet now here we are today, at a time when Tesla's technological leadership should be on display. The investment community largely sees us as a drift, with management focused on all the matters not Tesla, watching as Tesla's brand favorability dropped by 15 points last year, something that costs us margins. We have such a spectacular product pipeline and a team that knows how to execute at scale with low cost of goods sold, something that we are not being properly recognized for. It should go without saying, but apparently bears repeating that if you cannot produce with low cogs, you have no future. When I look around the auto industry these days, I see a lot of companies that have no future. Um, and that's a success on behalf of an incredible team here at Tesla that deserves recognition. But when people look at this company, that's not what they see. They see the company as a synonym for its CEO. And then the discussion turns to everything except for where it should be focused. It's my sincere hope that by introducing this proposal, we can not only accelerate the development of management at Tesla, 
but also increase its visibility. The fact that this company is so much more than its key persons is something that the public and the investment community should see. A founder often finds their greatest success in ensuring the future of the company and the development of the management talent who can come after them. Think Tim Cook at Apple, Steve Ballmer at Microsoft, and so forth. People who are ready from day one to execute without controversy, without distraction, and build a future for the company. I encourage the board should embrace this opportunity in the most public manner possible to showcase the future being built right here so that the discussion among the public and the investment community resolves, revolves around that and not around every public statement on every other topic made by the leadership. Um, I strongly encourage the board, the uh, shareholders to support this proposal and for the board to embrace it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. roberts -Dorr. The board is recommended that our stockholders vote against this proposal for the reasons as set forth in our statement of opposition in our proxy statement. Finally, as you saw, and investor advocates for social justice would like to raise a proposal from the floor. The proponents did not seek to have their proposal included in the proxy statement. The board recommends that our stockholders who are entitled to vote on this proposal vote against it. As a reminder, as is disclosed in a proxy statement, I've been advised by the proxy holders that they intend to vote all, all shares of stock over which they have discretionary authority against this proposal. Only shareholders who are shareholders of record or have obtained a legal proxy may vote for this proposal after it is presented. Courtney Wicks, representing Investor Advocates for Social Justice, is here to present the proposal. Ms. Wicks, I would like you to speak. You will have three minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, Tesla board members, management, employees, and shareholders. My name is Courtney Wicks, and I am the executive director for Investor Advocates for Social Justice. And I'm here on behalf of As You So and the Sisters of the Good Shepherd, who have filed shareholder proposals in the past on child labor and human rights abuses in Tesla's supply chain. I stand here today to call on shareholders to vote yes on requesting Tesla to conduct a third party report detailing the company's efforts to eradicate child and forced labor in its supply chain. The human rights risks that permeate throughout Tesla's value chain when not adequately addressed harm shareholder value and undermine Tesla's ability to lead the just transition. Growing attention and concern have been placed on child labor in cobalt mining in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, as well as on forced labor in China's Xinjiang region. 70% of the world's cobalt needed for EV batteries are sourced in the DRC. Over 40,000 children work in artisanal and small-scale mining, often without protective equipment and in dangerous spaces that frequently collapse. Many children are seriously injured or killed in the mining process. In Tesla's latest sustainability report, it claims to have audited 80% of the miners and refiners in their cobalt supply chain against responsible production standards. However, there are many industry backed standards, some of which are weak, and it isn't clear what percentage of audits were conducted by which initiatives. It is also unclear how the company's due diligence ensures cobalt sourced from child labor is not intermingled in the industrial cobalt supply chain. Subsequently, an estimated 1.8 million people have been subject to state-imposed genocide, detention and internment camps, and forced labor in the Xinjiang Uyghur region. A recent study concluded that automakers cannot conduct meaningful audits in this region. The recent Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act in the United States Senate inquiry into Tesla's supply chain highlights the regulatory risk Tesla faces. We believe a third party audit would provide greater transparency into how Tesla plans to eradicate child and forced labor from its supply chain. One of Tesla's competitive advantages is its sustainable leadership. Tesla, its board of directors and management team have a moral obligation to pursue ethical sourcing practices that do not rely on the lives of children or enslaved people. Tesla can continue to make a true leadership difference that forges a sustainable economic future that is anchored by innovation, empathy, human development, and shareholder value. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Wicks. We will now accept votes for, against, or to abstain for this proposal, but again, only for record holders or legal proxy holders. Please note, this is the final opportunity to submit proxies in order for them to be counted. I declare the polls are now closed. Based on proxies we have previously received, I'd like to announce on preliminary basis that our stockholders have approved the recommendations of the Tesla board on all agenda items, except that uh, shareholders have recommended one year for non-binding advisory vote on the frequency of future votes on executive compensation. This means that I would like to officially announce our new addition to the Tesla board, J.B. Straubel. After the final tabulation is completed, we will announce specific vote tallies filing, uh, in the filing form 8K within four business days of this meeting. That concludes the official business of today's shareholder meeting, which is now adjourned. During the course of the following session, we may discuss our business outlook and make forward-looking statements. Such statements are predictions based on current expectations. Actual events could, result, uh, could differ materially due to a number of risks and uncertainties, including those disclosed in our most recent Form 10-K and 10-Q filings with the SECs. Such forward-looking statements represent our views as of today, should not be relied on thereafter, and we disclaim from any obligation to update them after today. And with that, please welcome Elon Musk. I just want to say I love you guys. Uh, so, uh, well, we've got uh, a lot of uh, great news to talk about today. The, the Tesla team has done an incredible job of executing over the past year, uh, and we have many exciting years ahead of us. So, uh, yeah. So, with the uh, Tesla Master Plan Part 3, which admittedly was you know, quite technical. We wanted to go into a lot of technical depth. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, it was clear that, they weren't, that what we were saying were, was not just, um, were, were not merely assertions, but that they were backed up with physics and with real data, that it's realistic. Um, and, and, and with the Master Plan Part 3, we want to basically, the, the goal is to give people hope, re realistic hope, um, and, and maybe hope's even the wrong word, but simply to say that, that there is a path to a fully sustainable uh, global economy, that we are on that path, uh, that, that we are accelerating that path, and, that's, and that so long as we don't get complacent about it, it will happen. So. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll kind of rush through a, re, a recap of the uh, Mass Plan Part 3. But the, you know, some of the salient points are that it will actually take less energy to go, to, to, to go sustainable, not more energy. Uh, it's, it's actually more, and some of these things may sound very obvious, but it's, it's more energy efficient to go sustainable, not less. There's, and, and, and there's less mining that is required for a sustainable energy economy, not more. Also very important. Um, I, 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 and I heard a question raised about uh, cobalt mining. Um, and you know what? We, we will do a third party audit. So, 
So. In, in fact, we'll, we'll put a webcam on the mine. <laughs> and if, if anybody sees any children, please let us know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's, so. I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to go off on a tangent too much on that front, but it's very important to appreciate that uh, most of our battery packs um, are iron-based. Um, a majority of our battery packs are iron-based, not cobalt. Um, and, the, the, and, and then our other battery packs are nickel-based, and not cobalt. The nickel batteries use a little bit of cobalt as a binder, um, but only a tiny amount. In contrast, your phones all use 100% cobalt. <laughs> I recommend complaining to the phone manufacturers. <laughs> but even for the small amount of cobalt that we do use, we will make sure, six ways this Sunday, that, we're, that no child labor is being exploited. Obviously, we're a company that cares a lot about doing the right thing, um, and we don't want to delude ourselves or delude anyone else. So, yeah, come. So, again, just re recapping master plan part three, uh, it's, it's re really the point is to say that it, it is very, very doable, it is happening. Um, we need a, a, a threefold increase in solar and wind. Uh, we need to, admittedly, some of these are 29-fold increase in vehicle stationary and thermal battery production. Um, actually, in, in a nutshell, the way to think about sustainability is the, the, the faster we can make uh, battery packs, the faster we can move to a sustainable energy economy. That's the fundamental limiting factor. So, I'll just grab some water here. So, yeah, this, I can't emphasize that point, that point enough. The, 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 the rate of, uh, of, of lithium-ion battery production fundamentally decides the rate at which the world transitions to sustainability because the, the, the batteries are needed for all forms of transport and for stationary storage given the intermittent nature of, of, of solar and wind power. So. Um, so the, and we do invite uh, people to critique our um, analysis uh, because, you know, any given analysis is going to be to some degree wrong. So we, the, we, that's why we, we, we put it out there, looking for, for critical feedback to say, uh, well, perhaps we've got some things wrong, perhaps some things need to be adjusted. Uh, but uh, generally the, the feedback we've gotten is that actually our analysis is quite accurate. Um, and uh, we, we've, not, we've not seen uh, any rebuttals thus far that would cause us to uh, change our assumptions. So it's, it means roughly 240 terawatt hours of battery pack or 240,000 gigawatt hours of battery need to be produced, but it'll only take 0.2% of land area for solar and wind. So it's, a very, it's not like we need to carpet the earth with solar uh, and wind, it's just literally um, a, a fraction of a percent. Um, roughly a $10 trillion manufacturing investment, which relative to the global economy is actually a small, a small number. Um, yeah, roughly 10% roughly of, of the world economy. I, I think obviously, I think 10% of the world economy is a small price to pay for a sustainable energy future. So. It's also true that even when factoring in the cost or, or the, the emissions required to produce an electric vehicle, which for now are a, a little higher than gasoline vehicles, when you look at the emissions over time, electric vehicles absolutely win by a long shot. Um, and as, as we're seeing, the, 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 the cost uh, and the emissions required to produce a, an electric vehicle are dropping rapidly over time. Um, and we're going to get we're going to get to the point where an electric vehicle 
is lower is cheaper than a gasoline vehicle. So. So in, in 2022, we avoided releasing about 13 million tons of CO2, reduced uh, manufacturing GHG per vehicle by 30%, and reduced water usage uh, by, by 15%, uh, despite uh, massive increases in output. So we, <laughs> we also made our factories safer, which is really important. So we tracked the, the uh, injuries per, per person, um, and. Uh, we believe at this point we are uh, best in industry or have the lowest uh, injuries per person. So, We're now actually quite a big company from a headcount standpoint. This is, this is a, our direct uh, employment number. So this does not count contractors. Um, and for every uh, manufacturing job, depending on, on how you count it, there, there are at least five uh, sometimes uh, up to 10 jobs created uh, because you've got to look at the, the total supply chain um, as well as the, um, all of the support functions. So, you know, when you have, create a factory like this, you actually create jobs for teachers, lawyers, co uh, carpenters, electricians, uh, and, and, and restaurants, and, and everything that's, that's required to support um, a person at a factory. And this is why countries and, and states are so interested in having uh, uh, manufacturing facilities uh, in their location. So, anyway, it's, it's, it's a lot of people gainfully employed doing, doing very useful things. Uh, we received uh, 3.6 million job applications uh, last year, so... Uh, <laughs> and... Um, and, and, and once again, the, uh, the, the top two most desired companies uh, for engineers um, uh, on Earth uh, were SpaceX and Tesla. So. You know, at the end of the day, the competitiveness of any given company is a function of what, where are the most talented people interested in working? That, that is the team that's going to win. In fact, if, if, I'd say this is general, generally the case. Um, if you look at any given company and say, where are the most smartest, most driven people going to work? That company is going to win. Uh, so whether it's Tesla or, or any other company. Um, we're also excited to announce our next gen uh, drive unit, um, which is a, a big reduction in silicon carbide. Uh, it's half the factory space. Uh, Notably, there are zero rare earth elements required. So, yeah. And we're also uh, changing to uh, a 40 volt, 48 volt uh, low voltage architecture in the, in the car. So, uh, for the, <laughs> yeah, this is a big deal actually. Um, so the, the uh, cars have been operating with 12 volt batteries for basically about a century. So for the first time in, I think, over 100 years, uh, we're actually going to change from a 12 volt uh, voltage of you know outside of the drivetrain to a 48 volt uh, architecture. Um, and to f first approximation, that that means we need only about a quarter as much copper. For, uh, in, in, the, in the car as would be needed for a 12 volt uh, battery. So that's a big deal because people are often worried about, you know, is there enough copper? Yes, there is. So. Um, and FSD beta is growing uh, hyper exponentially. So <laughs> that, that, that chart is gonna look like a wall basically. Um, and um, just a question for, for those in the room, are, uh, have, how many people have tried out FSD beta? Okay, great. <laughs> so so what, what do you think of the latest build? <laughs> right? So it's, um, 
it's really getting to a point where it's, uh, at least for me, when, when I drive around, it's uh, a several days between interventions. Um, and I think we're, we're getting to the point where um, th there's really just one last piece of, of, of the system that needs to be uh, a neural net, which is the, the planning and control function. Um, and, and so we, we expect to have that last piece become a neural net, so it'll be end-to-end -end from uh, video in to control out uh, as a neural net. Um, and yeah, so it, the, the, thing, the thing to appreciate is it's, it's not that uh, full self-driving will be as good as a person. It will be much, much better, like a lot. Like uh, over time, uh, uh, 10 times more, it's ten times safer than a person. It's not even going to be a contest, frankly. Um, so this is this is a really big deal, um, and I think some people realize it. I think you guys probably realize it, but uh, the, being able to do a software update and have several million cars suddenly go from manual driving to uh, autonomous, uh, I think, will be the single biggest uh, asset value increase in history. Um, so. The, the normal usage of a passenger car is, is called roughly 10 to 12 hours per week, call it an, maybe an, an hour and a half per day. And when you drive around, you see lots of cars just parked in parking lots because out of the 168 hours in a week, they're using less than 10%, less than maybe 7% of the hours of the week a, a car is in use. But once it is autonomous, uh, it, it can be used probably, I don't know, 50, 50 hours a week, maybe more. So it, it's, it, 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 it is effectively a five-fold increase in the value of a car overnight. Um, it's, I, I'm actually surprised that so few people uh, realize this, or, or maybe they just don't believe it, it's real, um, but, uh, but it is. So this is, this is really an, an insanely big deal. Uh, we're, we're also the, the largest uh, EV maker in the world. Um, so, yeah, and I think that will continue. <laughs> um, and uh, while at the same time being the highest margin uh, of any car maker in the world. Now, making uh, electric vehicles profitably is, is hard, as illustrated by the difficulty of our competitors. Uh, a, number of our, a number of our competitors are making EVs at a significant loss. Um, so, uh, but we are not. We are uh, actually making EVs profitably, um, and almost no one else is. This is hard. <laughs> so, um, and I'd say for this, is, it's a ma massive credit to the Tesla team for, I, I can't tell you how hard manufacturing is. Like, you've probably heard me say that prototypes are easy, manufacturing is hard. Um, and, and, then ma and then manufacturing at scale uh, with positive cash flow is excruciating. <laughs> it's a mega pain. Um, but the Tesla team has done it. So. And as you can see, our free cash flow uh, per year has been increasing steadily. Um, so, you know, we're, we're making good progress. Um, I mean, it, it, it should be said that, uh, and, and I've made some of these comments, um, that, the, the, that interest rates make a, a very big, have a very big effect on the affordability of cars. So, the vast majority of people buy cars based on the monthly payment. So it's like how much money, how much is the monthly payment? Um, and it's, and it's, it's, not a, it's not a question of, of, of value for money. It, uh, it's just, do they actually have enough money? Can they afford it? Um, so, so for the vast majority of people, it's just, can they afford to pay the payment? As the interest rates increase um, and, and credit tightens, um, like it's safe to say that the you know these various banks that um, ha have died are probably 
uh, somewhat distracted um, from handing out auto loads. You know, it's like if they're on the way to the cemetery, increasing their auto loan portfolio is not the first thing on their mind. Um, so th this is going to be a challenging, I'd say, a challenging 12 months. I want to be sort of realistic about it. Uh, that Tesla is not immune uh, to uh, the global economic environment. Um, I, I expect things to be just at a macroeconomic level um, difficult for at least the next 12 months. Um, like, t Tesla will get through it and will do well, and I think we'll see a lot of companies actually uh, go bankrupt. Uh, so I, 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 don't, I want to make sure that this is not just the good news parade. It's important to, to understand that uh, no company is immune to the macro, macroeconomic environment. But that said, the, the, it, it won't be darkness uh, forever. I expect probably a year of difficulty uh, globally for, for everyone. Um, and then my, my best guess is that the global economy turns around uh, in roughly 12 months. Um, and, and then Tesla will be in, in an ex extremely good position. So anyone who is a long-term investor, I think, will do extremely well. And um, here I want to uh, give um, a big shout out to the Tesla in, uh, in internal software uh, team. This is... Um, It, it, it's actually a, a really big deal that uh, Tesla has such a powerful internal software team. Um, I mean, that, that, that software team is responsible for handling the entire uh, customer experience from, from buying the car, delivering the car, uh, operating the factories, um, service and support. Uh, we internally wrote all of the insurance and financial software. Um, the, it's, or the supply chain and logistics stuff, the data centers and infrastructure, um, and the analytics in, insight. This is all uh, internally written Tesla software. And I think there's, there are almost no companies in the world can do this uh, because they do not have uh, a, a, a very talented internal uh, software team. So they're generally reliant on third-party um, enterprise resource planning uh, software. So, t but Tesla is not. This, this is... This is a hidden strength of the company um, that, that often doesn't get a lot of attention, but is incredibly powerful. Um, so once again, I'd like to thank them for their work. And uh, as predicted, um, we are highly confident that Model Y will be the number one best-selling car on Earth this year. And, and in fact, in Europe, the best-selling car of any kind, uh, yeah, what, whatsoever. It's, it's already was that in Q1, I should say. Um, it's not like will be, it, it was that in Q1. Uh, and uh, China, the best-selling SUV. Um, and the United States, the best-selling uh, non-pickup vehicle uh, in the United States in Q1. So, um, you know, it's going well. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is like the optimal picture, but... Um, the, the, the uh, it, it, uh, Tesla cars are actually the, the safest cars in the world. We put um, immense effort into vehicle safety, and we keep updating the safety. So we keep improving um, the automatic emergency braking system just with a software update. Um, and we keep improving the airbag deployment uh, with software updates. Um, so we close the feedback loop on, like, when we see an accident, we analyze the accident and we say, what can we do uh, from a software standpoint? Because there's actually quite a lot you can do uh, to, first of all, avoid the accident, because the best accident is no accident. Um, and then if the accident occurs, how do we deploy the air blags uh, and the, the sort of the, the seatbelt uh, pretensioners uh, to minimize the probability of injury? Um, and uh, so even, even for cars that people have owned for many years, uh, we are behind the scenes. Uh, continuously uh, improving the safety of, of, of your car. And um, I mean, there are even some things that I think a lot of people aren't aware of that we, 
we actually have automatic cabin, cabin overheat protection. So uh, never in the history of the company has a, a, a child or a pet died in a Tesla. Okay. So it's, it's one of those like little known features, but uh, be because we have a large battery and we're monitoring things all the time, we can make sure that the cabin temperature uh, never gets to lethal levels. Um, and uh, I think that, that's, that's uh, you know, a big deal, so. Um, oh yeah, so, and then um, while lots of cars will say they've got like, you know, five stars or, or whatever, um, uh, th there's, there's nuance to that. Um, when we do, did the European NCAP uh, uh, sort of active safety tests, uh, we, we got the highest scores that they've ever seen. So, yeah. So we, we, we got a 98% uh, score on the active safety system, um, which obviously isn't good enough. Um, uh, and we will, but we, we, we have got a game plan for uh, getting rid of the last 2%. <laughs> so. And then it's worth noting things like the total cost of ownership of a Model 3 uh, is now comparable to that of a Toyota, Toyota Corolla. So. Um, superchargers, we were making uh, good progress. So our supercharger uptime is now 99.95%. So, yeah. And we have superchargers practically everywhere at this point. Uh, going to Megapack, because um, this is uh, stationary storage is an important part of solving the sustainable energy problem. Um, and the, mega, the, the Tesla Megapack is now more competitive than a natural gas peaker plant. So we have very strong demand for the Tesla Megapack. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to make a lot of them. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Um, and a, a while back, I predicted that the Tesla uh, stationary battery pack business would actually grow faster than the automotive side of things, and that's exactly what has happened. Uh, you can see it's, it's, an, it's an exponential curve uh, growing at a rate that, that is even faster than our vehicle sales. So. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, we're, we're expanding Gigafactory Nevada um, to for the Tesla semi production line and for the 4680 in house uh, cell production. And uh, yeah, some mega factory stuff. So. so th uh, th this is, um, so we're, we're aiming for 40 gigawatt hours a year, both in California and in China, but I think. Um, Long, long term, uh, this will be uh, much, much greater than this. I mean, I, I would say it, I wouldn't be surprised if long term uh, the stationary battery pack uh, activity went uh, well in excess of uh, 500 gigawatt hours per year. So the, the, the demand is like quasi infinite here. So. Um, as we look ahead to tackle the, what we see as the, the choke points in the supply chain, one of them is uh, lithium refining. Um, and uh, I mean, there have been a, been a few times on Tesla earnings calls where I've said, can someone please just do lithium refining? Um, because uh, it, it's, it's, there's just a shortage of it. Um, and, uh, but we, we, we really see very little activity Let's outside of China for, for lithium refining. So um, it's not that we wish to take on extra problems, but since nobody else was doing it, we felt we had to do this. And so uh, we've just broken ground on a lithium refinery in Corpus Christi, uh, which will be um, do more lithium refining than I think probably everything uh, outside of China. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
and we've signed a deal for our next Gigafactory in, in Mexico, Giga Mexico. Uh, and I, I, I think that's going to be a fantastic uh, factory. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're laying the groundwork for um, ultimately getting to 20 million vehicles a year. So a Cybertruck is a hard car to make. Um, it's because it's a, such a radically new design, it actually, you, you can't just use conventional methods of manufacturing. Uh, we had to invent um, a whole new uh, set of manufacturing techniques in order to build an exoskeleton-based car instead of an endoskeleton-based car. So it's, it's extremely non-trivial to, to build the Cybertruck. Um, but uh, we're making good progress on that. We have the, um, so, so yes, it's, uh, I, that, that's the, the, the thing I, when, when I, um, in, the, in the factory, I, I tour the, the Cybertruck line to see how, how we're, we're doing there. And, um, and uh, sorry for the delay, but we're, we're finally going to start delivering production Cybertrucks uh, later this year. And I think the product, if anything, is better than expectations. Cybertruck is the, is the car I will be driving on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so, and you know, people always want to know what our next product is. Um, but this is not the time to... <laughs> we, we, we obviously need to have a, you know, a proper, dedicated product launch. Um, I, I, I just want to emphasize that we are actually building a new product. We are actually designing a new product. Uh, we're not sitting on our hands here. Um, so uh, th there are two new products that I think you will be very excited about. And both the design of the products and the manufacturing techniques um, are head and shoulders above anything else that is present in industry. So, yeah, anyways. <laughs> if I were to guess, I, I, I would say of these, these two new products, just these two new products alone, I, I would say there's, we, we will probably make, obviously this is just, you know, Elon's guess. Um, <laughs> so, you know, don't sue me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, but, uh, I, I, you know, Elon's guess is that, um, I, that that we'll probably make in excess of 5 million units a year of these two model, models combined. So. <laughs> These are all real, by the way. I think the thing um, perhaps, perhaps most, most notable is if you look at the difference between the last time we showed Optimus, and, and this is a video that was taken basically yesterday, um, and the Optimus team was up all night uh, making this video. Um, the Optimus team has done an incredible job. Um, so just, yeah. <laughs> 
And it's uh, the, 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 the motors, the controllers, um, the electronics, um, and, and everything you see in the Optimus robot is a Tesla-designed uh, system. So this is, we, we actually tried to find um, drive actuators and, and whatnot that, that were off the shelf. We, we found that there, there weren't any. Um, in order to make um, an, an, an effective uh, humanoid robot, you actually have to design um, the motors and gearboxes and the, and the electronics from scratch because it's a very different application from anything else that exists. Um, so we took our world-class uh, motor and power electronics team and, uh, and, say, uh, and, and said, okay, we, we, we need to design uh, several um, uh, actuators that, are, that don't exist in the world. Um, and they did. So Optimus is, is, is working quite well. And then for uh, full self-driving, as full self-driving gets uh, closer and closer to generalized real-world AI, that same uh, software is transferable to uh, a humanoid robot. Um, just like, um, you, know, uh, we, you know, humans can obviously walk around with their arms and legs, uh, but, but we can drive a car, fly a plane, uh, steer a boat, uh, ride a horse. Um, if you have a generalized understanding, or, or if you have generalized real-world AI, which is what we are developing for full self-driving, um, it can be transferred to basically anything. Um, and um, so, so Optimus will use the same uh, FSE computer as the, as the car. Um, and um, the, the Optimus stuff is, is um, I think, somewhat, not somewhat, extremely underrated. People, people, the, the, because they, people just cannot comprehend the, 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 the consequences. Now, obviously, we need to make sure that we don't have a Terminator scenario. That's very important. Uh, it's all fun and games until Terminator shows up. Um, but uh, if you say, like, if you have had a, a generalized um, humanoid robot, uh, what would be the effective ratio of humanoid robots to humans? Because I think basically everyone would want one. And, and maybe people would want more than one, which means the actual demand for, for something like Optimus, if it really works, um, which it will, uh, is, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, 10 billion units? It's, it's, it's some crazy number. Um, it might be 20 billion units. If the ratio is, say, two to one on people, you know, to humanoid robots versus people, it, it, it might actually be, it, 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 it's, not, it's some very big number is what I'm saying. Um, and a, a number vastly in excess of the number of cars. Um, so my prediction is that uh, Tesla's long-term value uh, will be, a majority of the long-term value will be Optimus. Um, and, and that prediction I'm very confident of. So anyway. Let's see, so I think with that, we can do questions, perhaps? Oh, oh okay. what, what is it? Oh, sure. yeah, we also want to make sure, uh, please, retail investors, please, please vote. Uh, normally, retail investors, uh, for most companies, don't vote, but you're, we, we really care about your vote um, of, of, uh, of small investors, not just large, large investors. So please do register to vote. Um, your vote is very important. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah. That's, that's it, so. Um, yeah. So with that, we can go to ad hoc questions from the audience. <laughs> okay, definitely the person in the Optimus outfit with the red cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> Great outfit. <laughs> um, sure. Uh, 
and I'll, we'll try to get through as many questions as possible. And uh, you know, you hit, hit me with your toughest questions. Fine. <laughs> It is. Hey, Dad. It's your son, Optimus. <laughs> I, 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 want, hey, I wanted to see, do you do you see it more likely that you guys will have an RV first or a cyber camper? Uh, good, well, we're, we 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 don't have any plans to build an RV uh, quite yet. Although, I, I can certainly see how Cybertruck could be converted into an, an RV, um, and, and we are. Um, adding a lot of sort of attach points to Cybertruck so uh, others can build things. You know, other, uh, you know, somebody could have a startup or, or other companies can build things that are attachments that enhance uh, Cybertruck and, and turn it into a camper, essentially. Because um, I think it'd be really cool to have all these like third party uh, things available for Cybertruck. Awesome, thank you. All right. <laughs> I mean, you could also probably just you're that close, you can just say it or something, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, we'd like you guys to queue up behind us. So <laughs> okay. Three all right, all right. Yeah, so, so Go just ahead yeah, and queue up. Uh, and uh, it, 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 try to make the question short so we can get through a lot of questions. Um, so, uh, maybe. <laughs> Oh, oh! You mean just like a just like a Tesla team doing a podcast about Optimus? Yeah, you're like oh yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, you know, I, I wonder if um, maybe we could add have a sort of like a, an an addendum after the earnings call, which is like a you know thirty minutes podcast on Optimus or something. Like for those who are interested. Okay, I think we'll, we'll do that. So, uh, all right. Hey, Elon. Thanks for doing this today. It's an awesome event. Thank you. Welcome. Um, thanks for coming. Hope you guys are having a good time. Yeah, having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty confident we have the funnest uh, uh, shareholders meeting by a long shot. <laughs> Undoubtedly. Yeah. It's amazing. So. Um, so I'm really excited about a lot of things with Tesla. It's hard to pick a good question that it's going to cover everything. But with the energy side of the business, I think it's hugely underrated. I mean, we've got tons of problems in I mean, California with rolling blackouts. Sure. How do you think you can incentivize people you know, more for solar, battery backup? And we've got the referral program that's been beefed up as well. So you know, what are your thoughts there, how we can get people on board? Yeah, um, actually, one of the challenges um, in California and a few other places is that in order to have uh, the power wall um, be, be like an uninter uninterruptible power supply for the house, um, we have to actually have a switch that uh, d disconnects you from the utility. Otherwise, you just you know, uh, send energy into the grid, and it doesn't do anything. Um, and uh, that's actually been quite difficult with the utilities. But I'd like to thank PG&E for, for recently uh, helping us uh, get approval for installing the backup switch for Powerwall in California. Uh, so that uh, people can have uninterrupted power in, in California. And we're working on that uh, in, in um, every jurisdiction. So, um, so I'm, I'm confident that, that that's, that's, that's going to be a great long-term uh, situation. And then as I mentioned, Megapack uh, is, is growing uh, very, very rapidly. Um, and uh, yeah, so th things are, I, I mean, things are really growing like r ridiculously fast on the the, the energy storage front. So yeah, I feel I feel good about that situation. All right, next question. Uh, or... uh, oh, hello, great. Hey, Elon. Um, a lot of people have just kind of been wondering, how are you doing? So just wondering, what's up? How are you doing? How are you feeling? We saw you were partying in Cabo recently. <laughs> so just what me? How... <laughs> Must have been someone else. <laughs> yeah, so how how are you doing? Just human to human. How are you doing? Well, I have to say, it's been of a, a you know roller coaster situation, um, and um, you know, uh, like it's it's actually pretty rare for me to be at at a, at a party, um, so that that's like the you know f first party I've been at in, in a while, um, and actually, I wasn't even going to go to it. Then my my brother talked me into it. <laughs> so thanks, Gimbal. Um So. Um, yeah, I have to say, like the sometimes the the, the 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 
work pain level is quite excruciating. Um, and, then, and then on top of that, I get dumped on in the press. So it's like, you know, it's not exactly super fun. Um, but, um, you know, there was a, you know, a short-term distraction because uh, I had to do, like, some major open-heart surgery uh, on, on Twitter to ensure the company's survival. Um, but that, I think, Twitter is now in a stable place um, and uh, obviously very excited to have uh, Linda Yaccarino join. And um, so... I, I think Linda's going to do a, a great job uh, running, running Twitter, um, and uh, I'll, I'll provide, obviously, guidance on uh, and, uh, you know, uh, technology development. But as you can see, uh, tw I think Twitter at this point has released more new features in the last six months than it has in the last six years. So, you know, obviously this is not a Twitter meeting, but... Uh, but <laughs> But, but, but the, the, the larger point is that I feel at this point I don't need to devote incremental time. Uh, the amount of time that Twitter will take going forward is, is uh, relatively small compared to the last six months. Um, so, yeah. Um, you, know, I, you know, apart from, like, the, there's, like, some macroeconomic things that we can't do anything about, um, overall I feel uh, very good about the health of the companies and... Um, I'm increasingly uh, optimistic about the future. Uh, thanks for asking. It's kind of you to ask. So. Have you guys considered stretching out the financing terms on your auto business? Uh, you talked about earlier, uh, consumers don't necessarily look at the sticker price they're paying. They're, all they're concerned about is monthly payment. Right. And one of the fundamental advantages of an EV is that it's substantially more durable. And so... Um, would you guys ever consider stretching terms out to 10 years, especially in this rate environment, given the shape of the yield curve? You know, extending the terms out that farther, you'd actually be capturing a lower cost of funds. Yeah, the, I mean, the important thing to appreciate is that, like, um, that, that, that the vast majority of the, the, the financing is from banks. So it's kind of whatever the banks are prepared to do. Um, I mean, this year, I, I guess we'll do on the order of $100 billion of sales. Um, and, and we don't have $100 billion in, in cash to finance that. So the vast majority of it has got to come from, uh, you know, from banks. Um, so it's really the bank's choice of what they're willing to do. Um, and it's, it, it has been tr tricky with, uh, with, with banks recently because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's, if, if you're a bank and you're not sure whether you're going to be alive or not, uh, you're, that's, it's a pretty big distraction. And increasing your... Uh, auto loan portfolio is uh, very much a secondary part priority. So it's just important to appreciate it's not up to Tesla, it's, it's up to the banks. Um, and there's not, there's not some easy solution where you can say have a, a so-called a, a captive financing arm, et cetera, because you have to securitize those loans. And the market for securitizing them is, is, is weak. There is no, I wish there was an easy path, but, but, but there isn't. Um, so, you know, I think it's just important to remember, remember that the economy moves in cycles. Um, and we've had a very long period of upcycle. Uh, the next 12 months will be, I think, difficult for everyone. And I, I think, uh, you know, when uh, Berkshire Hathaway had their uh, annual meeting, uh, Warren and Charlie actually said, like, hey, this, this year the, the Berkshire companies are going to make less money. Um, and so, and, you know, they're, they're, they're very well-run organizations, um, and I think that's just generally true for the economy. So, you know, but, but, if, but, 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 but the, it, it's also important to remember that, you know, there, there are good times and, and there are dark times, but then the good times follow the dark times. So um, my advice would be don't look at the markets for the next 12 months. <laughs> if, if there's a dip, by the dip, <laughs> um, and I, I think you will not be sorry because, the, 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 you know, the, the, there's just generally a sort of a, there's an economic cycle to things, but things come back up. So um, my guess is tough times for a year. Like, like I said, just, just, just my guess. Uh, and, and, but then Tesla will emerge stronger than ever, um, and the the long term, if you say like net present value of future cash flows will be incredible in my opinion. All right. so.
Hey, Elon, meet Kevin here. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good, thanks. So uh, Tesla is the largest position in my ETF, ticker PP, and uh, uh -huh. that's for pricing power. Right. And uh, I'm curious, I really think that some of the features that you highlighted here, like the uh, over-the-air airbag deployments of improving yeah. the features, the safety features, are great things that we could be advertising. For I know you've heard this many times <laughs> before. I know you sure. have. But I, no, no. Five, I, I sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Five hundred twenty-five bucks off every car this year is half a Netflix's advertising budget. Thousand bucks is the entire Netflix advertising budget, and I see their ads everywhere. Why not advertise these things that you told us here? I feel like nobody else knows about this. I just sure. talked to Gordo, the Tesla bear, and he's still talking about twenty sixteen New York Times pieces. These people are in the past, I mean, man. That's like seven years ago at this point. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, it's actually, I, I talk to a lot of people and they still think that like Teslas are like super expensive. And I'm like, no, actually the starting price for a Tesla is below the average auto price in the US. And it's like, and that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's good that it's that way, you know, like we're, our, our goal was always to make cars that are affordable to the general public. Um, so. So I, I hear you. I, I mean, I think, um, and, and it's indeed ironic that, you know, <laughs> Twitter is like highly dependent on advertising. So, um, you know, here I am, it's like, uh, you know, not, never used advertising really before and uh, now uh, have a company that's highly dependent on advertising. So um, I, I guess I should say advertising is awesome and everyone should do it. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I, I, I think I, I hear your, your, your uh, sort of larger point, which is that um, there are um, amazing features and functionality about Teslas that people just don't know about. Um, and um, so, yeah. And, and, and although there's, there's obviously a lot of people that uh, follow, like, say, the Tesla account and, and, and the, and the uh, uh, you know, my account, whatever, on, on Twitter, um, uh, to some degree, it is preaching to the choir, and the choir is already convinced. Um, so I, I think what you're saying um, does, does have some merit, and um, you know what? I, I believe in taking, taking suggestions, so um, we'll, we'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. All right, I, I, was, I, wasn't I wasn't expecting that level of enthusiasm. <laughs> but uh, okay, it's, it sounds like our shareholders, if I read between the lines, <laughs> subtle as it is, are saying we should probably do some advertising. Okay, very well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hi, Elon. Hi, Tesla. Thank you for everything. So my question is regarding, you recently added Steam to the car, and that's great. We can play video games. Is Tesla like currently developing uh, the ability for other parties to develop apps for the car? For example, if, if we can buy actually customizable teams for the operating system of the car, I think you, you can make some revenue there, like that, that space teams for the car or Lord of the Rings or stuff like that. Do you have any interest in that right now? Well, um I mean, the important, so I, th I think the, the notion of having entertainment apps and whatnot becomes increasingly important as the cars achieve self-driving. Um, because otherwise, the, 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 you, you, you can only really watch, uh, play games or watch movies or whatever when the car is stationary. You know, which, you know if it's charging or what, whatever, that, that, then you can use it. But when it's, when it's, at the point at which it's full self-driving, I think it's very much about entertainment uh, and productivity. Um, so I think that is something that might make sense in the future. Um, the, but overwhelmingly, the focus right now uh, for, for, for Tesla software, uh, apart from improving safety, is achieving full self-driving and then getting full self-driving to be much safer than uh, human driving. Um, and then once, as we, once we achieve full self-driving, I think that there could be a lot of opportunity for, for apps and whatnot. Um, so, but you know, even in the car as it is today, for a Model S and X, um, we've, we've made a, a sort of a, a full um, uh, Steam integration. So you can actually just literally log on with, with a Model S or X uh, with your Steam account and play any game that is on Steam, which is a lot of games. 
uh, which is pretty wild. I, I think a lot of people don't, don't know that. Uh, you can play with a keyboard and mouse. You can play with a joystick or controller. Um, you can also play uh, Netflix, YouTube, uh, or anything else. Um, Iron Four. My little son X. Uh, he he loves watching, uh, you know, actually loves loves watching rocket videos uh, in the on the in the rear screen of the the Model S and X. So um, yeah, so it is something that we will do uh, long term. Um, but, but, but one of the things, we already have a lot of stuff there, and, and we'll do more as uh, self-driving becomes a, a reality. So. So. Hey, Elon. Um, I'm John, or Dr. Know-It-All on YouTube, and I okay. don't know it all. But anyway, my question is, as you guys move completely or finish the transition and full self-driving from version 1.0 of the software to 2.0, what do you perceive of as the like, potential stumbling blocks after that? Because it seems like that's the major, you know, kind of step change that needed to happen. And so you're almost done with that. And what happens after that? And also, please let me interview about you, you about full self-driving. Like, I'll, I'll spend two hours talking <laughs> to you about just that. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, there's, there's, there, when you can really think about uh, full self-driving as um, a sort of a march of nines of reliability. So you, we, we, we need to get to a point where the probability of injury is uh, l lower than that of the average human driver, and then ultimately, probability of injury is much lower. So even at the point at which the car uh, is capable of driving itself, there's still actually a lot of work to do. Because um, you know, every year there's a million people that die in auto accidents, and I think uh, probably everyone in this audience has uh, friends and family uh, that that have died or, be, or been seriously injured in uh, auto accidents. Um, and, and for every, there's like a million people that die, there's, there's 10 million people roughly that are seriously, like permanently injured. Um, and, um, and, 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 and so it matters that we, you know, if, if, if we can get that um, down by an order of magnitude, you know, there's like 900,000 lives saved per year, maybe 9 million severe injuries prevented per year. Um, and so that, that really, I think morally has to be our primary goal. Um, and um, I, I guess I'm open to uh, a, an interview on, on FSD. Um, two hours is a long time, but <laughs> um, okay, okay. Um, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll do an interview. It's got to be on Twitter, but sure. <laughs> all right. Hi. Hi, Elon. I'm Josh Phillips, long-term retail investor. My question is about uh, battery-grade lithium supply in the next 10 years. Um, you know, lithium experts all agree that mines are just not coming on online fast enough uh, to meet battery supply. And actually, Drew Baglino pointed this out recently. Some mines take 10 years plus to be permitted. And even GM has actually announced like huge lithium deals that will like secure away supply from the rest of the industry. So what's Tesla's plans to get more supply of lithium uh, at the mine level outside of refining, uh, but also uh, at a deeper level than a traditional offtake? Because as we know, he who controls the spice controls the universe. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so um, I, I actually think that the the, the industry analysis is, is incorrect, um, and the, the, the constraint is fundamentally that of processing. Um, so, um, now our refinery in Corpus Christi that we're building is, um, you know, primarily oriented towards refining spodumene, um, of which there is a truly vast amount in the world. Um, about, I think, about three quarters of our lithium comes from Australia. Um, and frankly, you could increase the rate at which the mines are operating, um, and the limiting factor is, uh, is, is, is not how fast can you mine, but how fast can you, can you process. So the, 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 the mines are only going to produce ore at the rate at which refineries can handle the ore, or it's pointless. So um, I, I think my opinion, and obviously I, I could, could be wrong about this, but it, is, is that it's, it's really not, not about the lithium ore. Lithium is extremely common. Lithium is everywhere. In every, every country has got lithium. It's, it's not like oil. So lithium is one of the most common elements on Earth. Um, 
But taking the lithium ore and refining it to battery grade is extremely difficult because the purity levels required for a battery are extremely high. If you have even a small impurity, then uh, you will degrade the life of the cell dramatically. So you need ultra pure uh, battery uh, grade lithium. And that's why, that's why our focus is on refining as opposed to, to mining. Thank you. Hi, Elon. Uh, thanks. It's a great time here. Uh, you spoke about safety in your presentation of the vehicles. And I just want to say uh, I'm thankful to you for building such a safe vehicle because I'm here today with my son. Uh, we drove in his Tesla 3 over here uh, that he replaced with the one that he got rear-ended significantly in and it destroyed the car. Uh, but we're able to be here today. So great. thank you very much. Absolutely. Not sure where to look. <laughs> there? Okay. Hey, uh, how's it going? My name's Austin Gregory. Um, I'll ask about this because I don't think it gets near enough love. I was wondering if there are any updates on the next gen Roadster, actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know it's sort of like the cherry on top and uh, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. You guys have a lot, of, a lot on your plate, if you've said before, but if there's any updates on like the release timeline, all that stuff, the SpaceX package, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, that'd be amazing. Thanks. Uh, to totally uh, fair and reasonable question. Um, where is that thing? Um, <laughs> um, so uh, we expect to complete uh, the engineering and design of the next gen uh, Tesla Roadster this year um, and hopefully start, hopefully uh, start production, this is not a commitment, but hopefully start production next year. So, um, but I, I, it, it, is, it is like, it is like as, as you alluded to, it's, it's it's not even the icing on the cake, it's the cherry on the icing on the cake. Um, so I, would, I wouldn't expect it to be like, uh, it's definitely not gonna be a huge contributor to, to revenue. It, it will be a modest contributor to profitability, but it will be sick. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, you know, there's some value to me uh, running two companies because uh, the, it, the, the next gen Roadster will have the SpaceX option package. So, that, and that, that'll make it truly next level. So. Hey, Elon. Eva McMillan here. First of all, I want to thank you for uh, making the absolute best, safest, and most fun cars in the whole world. Cars in in Florida. You could. We are seeing many, many more cars in Florida than a year ago. Yeah. Matter of fact, cars are doubled. So um, the question is, we all want Tesla insurance. Oh, is yeah, it yeah. coming? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, that's a great question. Uh, okay, later, uh, Zach, Zach, Zach says it's coming later this year. But, uh, but I have to tell you, like, the, one of the thorniest things uh, in, in the United States is car insurance, uh, or insurance in general, because it's a state-by-state uh, and every state's got different rules and regulations. Um, so that, that's why it's not like rolled out uh, nationwide. I think really there should be one national standard for insurance, especially car insurance. Uh, I think it would improve the uh, cost, effective, cost effectiveness of, of car insurance. Uh, but, our, but our intent is to, to roll out nationwide and ultimately internationally. Um, um, but there is a staggering amount of paperwork that is, that is needed uh, to, uh, to, to get it done. But as Zach said, uh, we expect to offer uh, Tesla insurance in, uh, in Florida later this year. Thank you. Thank you, Elon. Thank you, Elon. Alexandra Mertz. I am Tesla Boomer Mama. Very happy to be here. Um, so very grateful to the Tesla team and you, of course. Just want you to know we love the emotions every day, joy and less joy, but we're there. Shareholders, it's not easy. We're here, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. So my question initially was on in-house financing. You already answered that, and I want to congratulate you to the double investment grade rating. But then I asked my Twitter subscribers, I'm sure you're going to appreciate, what they wanted to bring forward, sure. and that question made the cut. Here we go. Automotive, including SAS, peak margin, the same for energy. What number and by when do you have the best Elon gas that we get there? 
So I'm not sure I fully understand the question. So this is the peak margin for automobile, mar for automobile oh, yeah. including SAS and energy, and by when will we get there? Your guess. I know nobody will sue you. Sorry, what's SAS? Well, service, software as a service. Oh, oh okay. Um, you, you mean FS, self-driving? I think FSD, yeah, yeah. what's going to be the top automobile margin? And oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, what, what I was saying earlier is, is, is that um, at the point at which you have uh, a, a truly autonomous vehicle that can drive around with, with no one in it, um, the utility of the vehicle, I, I think, as a rough guess, is probably five times what uh, it, it is today because you know people will drive an average of an hour and a half a day perhaps uh, so 10 hours a week uh, but if the car is autonomous it can probably I'm just, this, this, just speculation but it probably can operate for a third of the hours in the week which would mean 50 or more hours thus a five-fold increase but but the car costs the same sure I understand but what is going to be the margin for Tesla then, because you're obviously thinking you're going to sell much more FSD then, right? You may have a system in place of robotaxis. You may have a cut with fleets. So did you do any projections what the automotive peak margin for Tesla could be in two years, five years, and the same for energy? Well, I mean, this is definitely, we're in sort of highly speculative territory here. Um, but, but, but obviously, if, if you've got a, a car that costs the same and, and has, say, I don't know, a 20 or 25 percent margin and, and suddenly is able to be used five times as much, then, then you might have 80 percent margins and the revenue would increase several fold. That's why I say it's, the, it's probably going to be the biggest asset value uh, step change in the history of Earth. Uh, yeah. and, 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 and energy does not have the energy just simply does not have uh, such an increase in asset utilization so I would expect energy to be to remain at sort of a 20, 20 25% ish to 30% margin all right so you said ask the tough question you're still good right yeah all right cool First of all, though, as a family man, I just want to say there's a couple of things like a loop for tether of a, of a car seat going through the headrest, which would be super helpful. There's a couple other things that would be really nice. The Model Y is the only one you can do that in today. Maybe we could fix that. But when we're thinking about 4680 battery cells, should we be thinking about the efficiency and the performance we're getting today? Or is there some updated timeline path that we could see closer to battery day presented efficiency, performance that we can look to in the future? Um, well, well, I think, first of all, it's really important to expre like, express the difficulty of, you know, like for Tesla to go from, from nothing to making a battery cell that we aspire to be better than any other battery cell on Earth even when compared to companies where the only thing they do is make a battery cell, uh, is, is obviously not a trivial exercise. Um, that, that said, uh, we do see a path to, to you know, high, very high energy density and higher energy density and lower costs than, than anything else out there. Um, but, it's, but it's a hard path. It's a very hard path. Um, and, and no, normally, this, it, it would be absurd for companies to attempt such a thing. And no other car company is, is, is really attempting to do anything like this uh, in, in a serious way. So I, I guess technically BYD, because they started out as a battery company. But um, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult thing to do. Um, but I think we are tracking to success in that regard. Hey, Elon, first of all, thank you for undoubtedly making the world a better place for my son to live in. Thank you. How do you say? Uh, once Cybertruck is fully ramped in Austin, what is the target production? And also, there's some rumors that you're thinking about stepping down as CEO. Please say it ain't so. <laughs> it ain't so. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so I think Tesla's gonna play an important role uh, in, in AI um, and AGI, and uh, I, I think I need to oversee that to make sure it's, it's good, so, because um, that's, that's a thorny problem if there ever was one. Um, you know, like, uh, I, I think generally people do not, um, or very few people, even in the AI community, do not um, uh, appreciate uh, just how much capability Tesla has in AI. Um, it's by far the most advanced real world AI. There's no one even close. Um, and um, reality has the most degrees of freedom. So I, I gotta make sure that's good. Um, sorry, and, and you were saying something? Cybertruck fully ramps. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, 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 I said, you know, we'll start production later this year. We'll start handing over cars later this year. There will be an S-curve of production, so it'll be slow at first. And then, and then ramping up. Um, and I guess we'll see what the demand is like. Uh, so, I, I mean, I think there's, we're likely to do probably um, a quarter million a year, I think, maybe more. Um, again, very much dependent on, on, on what the demand uh, is like. And, um, and it's, it's, you know, we, we don't just need to ramp up production, but we also need to, to um, improve the, the, the production cost efficiency, so, which is going to be also a very, very hard thing. So, but I'd say it's, you know, a quarter million a year is, is a reasonable guess. Um, and it, it might be 500,000, I, I don't know. But we'll, we'll make as many as people want and can afford. Um, and, 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 but, and then like I said, it's, it's going to be hard to make the, the cost of, uh, affordable because it is a new car, new manufacturing method. So, um, in, in the grand scheme of things, relative to the production rate of all the other cars we make, it will be small, um, but, but still very cool. Um, yeah, thanks. You know, maybe three more questions? Sure. Oh, thank you. Good day, Mr. Musk. Hello, my name is Delia Archer, and this question aims to address Tesla's efforts in developing skilled workforce, attracting diverse talent, and promoting career opportunities within the company. When I look around, I see a lot of young faces, and I think about internships and apprenticeships for students in high school and beyond. My question is, are there any plans to expand existing partnerships and explore new avenues for collaborations with educational institutions and nonprofit organizations to attract the next generation and vary career pathways? Um, yeah, actually, we, with, with uh, all of our um, uh, gigafactories, we work with the, the, the local schools, um, actually from the high school level, community college and university, um, because it's incredibly important to foster the talent for the factories. Um, as you saw from the, the employment numbers, we actually need a lot of people. Even though we've got a lot of automation, we still need a lot of people to operate the factories, um, and it really matters that they have the, the right training. So uh, we're big believers in, in uh, reaching out to uh, educational institutions, uh, and um, because, uh, frankly, it's in our interest to do so. Um, so uh, thank you for asking the question. All right. Elon, Josh Fuller. I had uh, originally thought of asking uh, about uh, the, the fun police and pushing <laughs> back on the boombox and allowing us to screech at people with goats again. But uh, after seeing Optimus, I was inspired to ask, uh, does, has anybody asked Optimus's opinion of, of Mars? And <laughs> does he have a ticket yet? Uh, well, you know, Optimus is not uh, a deep thinker at this point. Um, <laughs> So uh, Optimus is uh, still, you know, figuring out how to do basic stuff. Um, like, it, like it, it, it couldn't make, uh, you know, cook some eggs or something quite yet. Um, it, it, so we need to get Optimus to the point where uh, it has um, reasonable ag agility and can, and can do basic things. Um, and... Um, you know, and we're aiming for it to, to start off doing simple tasks that are sort of boring and re re repetitive um, or, some, or dangerous, uh, basically jobs people don't want to do. <laughs> so that, that's, our, that's our goal. 
uh, and, and um, I'm confident we'll, we'll achieve that goal. Um, and then uh, we've we got to figure out how to make it at scale, make sure that the, robots, the robot is safe. Um, I think it's going to be very important to have um, a local means of turning it off. Um, <laughs> so safety is, going to, safety is going to be extremely important. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, but, but right now, uh, it, it is not at an intelligence level where it's pondering uh, questions like Mars. Um, but perhaps it will be one day. So. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, Elon. My name is Luke Arsenault. Uh, I just want to start off by saying a big thank you to you and the team of Tesla for all you guys do. Um, it's been great to see, and I'm, I'm so happy for you guys. My question is, with the rise in cybersecurity threats to operational technology and the Internet of Things, what steps is Tesla taking to protect the company itself and its products from these threats? Also, as a suggestion, because I know you like suggestions, for the navigation, do you think we could do something on the UI that adds in when you're about to take the off-ramp to show a picture of that exit, kind of like other map systems do? Um, and then also... Oh, my, man, this is a lot of questions. <laughs> one of my friends wanted to get a shotgun from you, if that's possible. Okay. Um, well, we are, we are constantly improving the navigation system, um, and uh, uh, being robust to hacking is incredibly important. Uh, in fact, we um, uh, conduct a lot of sort of uh, third-party hacking uh, con contests to uh, try to get the, the best hackers in the world to break into our cars. Um, and actually, no one has yet actually broken into a, a, a Tesla in a way that would allow you to really control the car in a significant way. But they have gotten to where they can like honk the horn and mess with the infotainment system. Um, and I'd like to thank them for their efforts. <laughs> um, so we, we take information security uh, extremely seriously. Um, for navigation, um, yeah, there's, there's definitely things we can improve there. Uh, but really, uh, down the road, navigation uh, visuals are not going to matter very much because the car is going to take you wherever you want to go. Um, yeah, uh, for, as for pictures, I, 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 have to, I have to decline, unfortunately, because otherwise, if, if I say, I, I, hate being, I actually hate being rude to people. So if, if I say yes to one person, then it's, it's, it's like selfies for a zillion. Uh, you know, it gets kind of gets kind of crazy. So, um, but uh, thanks for asking. Maybe we'll take one, one or two more questions, actually. So, uh, sure. I don't know. Okay, what's your issue? Sorry. Hello. I, I had a question on the efficiency. I don't know if you've been paying attention to Aptera, and I was curious if you thought that was a space that you could see Tesla getting into as far as the, not just an efficient manufacturing process, but also the actual car itself and range. I or just buy. I'm not. I'm not super familiar with, with with them, but we have a lot of fish. We, we have a lot of products to to get done. Um, it, it's not like it, this is. It's it's never a shortage of ideas. Um, I, I, ideas, frankly, I, I find ideas to be somewhat trivial. Um, but the execution of the idea is extremely difficult. And as I said, like prototypes are easy. Production is hard. Production at ca and cash flow positive is excruciating pain that you could, like, at a level you cannot believe. So it's, it's not product ideas. They're irrelevant. Tough. Right, so that's what I think of them. Um, it, it, it's sort of like the idea of going to the moon. That's, not, who can, that's, that's irrelevant. <laughs> Getting to the moon is the hard part. <laughs> so, okay, so maybe one last question, yeah. Elon, uh, John Lopez from Orlando here. I've got two things for you real quick. Uh, the first one is with rideshare being a growing thing, especially with Tesla owners, are we gonna get a guest mode option available for that? Uh, the second thing is, is uh, as an x owner, I would really love to get track mode. As, as a what, sorry? x -Plaid. Uh, Well, Plaid, no. has, Plaid has track mode. The Model x Plaid does not, though. Oh, oh, Model X. Um, yeah, we can probably add that, sure. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, so, rideshare uh, is a bunch of these things will, will, will really not be relevant in a, in a self-driving world. Um, you, you can um, 
summon the car and take you somewhere. And if you want to add someone to that, that ride, you can if you want to. Um, but overwhelmingly, it is about uh, achieving uh, self-driving, full self-driving. And um, you know, I think we're really getting to, to the final stages of, of full self-driving where, um, I mean, I drove for several days around Austin, just dropping pins in random locations, and I had zero safety interventions. So it's, it's really, and e even in the city of San Francisco, which is very complex, um, I haven't had a safety intervention in a long time. So um, I think it's, uh, it's really it's getting to the point where, you know, I, admittedly, I have been optimistic about this in the past. Um, uh, but, but I think, I think this time... <laughs> All right, I won't say it. <laughs> All right, fair enough. All right. <laughs> okay, I think it'll happen, you know. So. All right, you want one last question? Sure. So first, congratulations on your decision to try advertising. We all want Tesla to pass <laughs> oh, Apple in market cap. I, I don't realize people wanted it that much. <laughs> OK. It's good that a lot of people agree. So earlier this year, you cut prices on everything, 15 20%. More recently, you've been raising prices on Model Y, Model S, Model X. And can you just talk about the pricing strategy on Model Y going forward and keep it separate from the decision to bring out the next-gen vehicles that we all agree is going to, you know, blow the doors off on volume. But just on Model Y, it's the best-selling product in the, in, the, in the world. Can you just talk about strategy of pricing going forward on that? Thanks. I mean, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. I mean, we see what the demand is, and then we adjust pricing to meet the demand. Um, now, the, the, the thing is that um, what, what is... Uh, you know, what happens with, with other car makers is that they're actually constantly adjusting pricing on cars. It's just not obvious. The, in, in the case of Tesla, you can see immediately when there's a price change that occurs because uh, we don't have any intermediaries, don't have any dealers. There's no, there's no manufacturer's, manufacturer's suggested retail price. Um, so, but the reality is actually at, at, at car dealers, the prices are changing radically. Um, I mean, last year there were, there were significant premiums above MSRP at, at uh, sort of the conventional uh, car dealer, uh, you know, like, so you'd pay above MSRP last year. Um, and then uh, this year, I think things are below MSRP or close to it. Um, and then the, the, the manufacturers will then also offer incentives. So what, what's actually happening is are, are very big uh, pr price shifts um, by other car makers. They're just not uh, obvious, um, whereas with Tesla, it's obvious. Um, so, and, and this, is, this is necessary because demand fluctuates a lot. So something's got to be done to achieve a supply-demand uh, cl clearing point for, for volume. Um, so just people are reacting to something that's obvious as opposed to saying, oh, yes, every car company does this all the time. Uh, Tesla is no exception. That's the actual reality. So, um, all right. So. Last question. I'll, I'll be really quick. Okay. So I will say I have been driving FSD. My wife drives FSD. There's a, a term called the wife test. My wife will only drive our kids on FSD. It's incredible. Okay. So that, that's, that's, that, that is a great, uh, I mean, the, the sort of significant other test is a very uh, a good test. Uh, because for, there were, for a while there, there was like, you know, friends or significant others would be like, please don't put it on. <laughs> it's too scary. Um, but then it gets, it's getting to the point where, I mean, uh, it's, it's going to be just smooth as silk. So, in, in fact, you'll be able to visually tell, uh, perhaps even now you can, visually tell if the car is being driven on FSD or manually. Because if it's being driven on FSD, it's, it's smooth, smooth and precise. I mean, if you look at actual, if you, if you actually closely observe cars going down the highway, um, the, the people are constantly moving in their lanes. So the, the cars are like doing this all the time when they're manually driven. If it's, if it's actually on FSD, it's, it's dead center in the lane. 
Um, and and uh, it, it will actually get to the point where it is not merely, and maybe is at that point, uh, not merely uh, uh, safer than a, than a person, but actually uh, way smoother uh, than, than manual driving. Um, I, I just, I, really, I can't say enough about the profundity of, self, of full self-driving. It is, it is just one of the, the biggest changes in history that will occur. It's, it's not some feature. <laughs> it's, it's like a profound, it's really as profound as electrification. Um, and, um, and, 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 and that we have already have millions of the cars on the road that will literally achieve this with a software update. I mean, that's like head exploding emoji, you know? Um, and um, I think probably a lot of people in this room realize it, but the, the rest, most of the rest of the world doesn't. Um, yeah, so. Uh, given how incredible FSD is and how much, you know, uh, merit you're giving to potential future margins of the car, um, as well as how much Im an impact on society. And given that they didn't even want you to say if it's going to happen this year, just you know, not to jinx it. Sure. Would it be possible to have just for uh, some type of public-facing, investor-facing kind of timeline, so that way, you know, we you mentioned V12s coming, and that's you know AI front end. Can we could we just see kind of a timeline on this is the version we're at. These are the things we're working on, and this is when we're, you know, ETA. So we can kind of see that in real time instead of uh, maybe Elon time. <laughs> no, so so the, the, the thing that's been, um, you, you know, um, really difficult with uh, full self-driving is that uh, it, it's, it's, it very often seems like it's about to, to happen until you realize that you're actually at a local maximum and that you need to re-architect uh, elements of the software uh, to get out of the local maximum to, to then a higher local maximum. So it's been this sort of series of logarithmic curves. Um, and, and that's why it's been like, uh, it seemed like, oh, if you just extrapolate this on a straight line, it gets to self-driving, except that it, it, it's not a straight line, it's a log logarithmic curve, and it, it sort of, and you, and you start hitting these like local maximums where you'll sort of asymptote to a certain capability and then have to re-architect things. So, now, I, I think we're, fi we're finally at um, a high enough local maximum, or will be this year, where to, to the point where it is, I think, probably safer than, than a person, meaning the probability of injury on average uh, will be better than, than a person, even if, the, if, if someone pays no attention uh, to, to the car. It, it is worth saying that, that right now, um, for human-supervised uh, Tesla full self-driving, it is dramatically safer than manual driving. It's like, I, I think like four times safer, maybe more. Uh, so it is already a massive safety improvement to have human supervised uh, FSD right now. Um, and I think we will, we will get to the point um, where we're always going to be in some amount of local maximum, but I think that we'll be in a local maximum that exceeds uh, <laughs> human uh, human level safety this year, um, yeah, but I guess we'll see. So um, anyway, I, I want to thank you all for, for coming, and um, so, so. Uh, just want to say, like, uh, you know, your, your support is uh, super appreciated, um, and, um, you know, the, as I say, a friend in need is a, fr a friend indeed, and uh, su supporting Tesla when the chips are down, um, that, that, th those are the real friends, and, and you're them, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs>